Hey YouTube, thanks for joining me again. Had a chance to do some snowshoeing uh, with Polk sleds earlier this year. Uh, we really learned a lot. We got a chance to try out some new gear, some new techniques. Uh, we found out some things worked, some things didn't work. Uh, definitely some things that we're going to do again when we go out uh, later this year. But I thought it'd be fun to do um, a review. One of my friends actually has a Kefaro 12 man with a uh, stainless steel stove and uh, turned out to be a really cool experience. So stick around and I'll show you how we did it. Okay, so let's start with the sled. We knew that we wanted to take a lot of gear with us. So we did some research, found out that Polk sleds are really popular. They allow you to take a lot of weight with you into the snow. So we found a great deal. I think a couple of us bought them at uh, Sportsman's Warehouse. I found mine on Amazon. Really wasn't that much. Um, and then the trick was just figuring out the different ways that we would uh, attach them to ourselves for pulling along. So I found some hardware after you know doing some research, watching some videos. I just bought some hardware down at Lowe's. Um, ended up drilling holes into the sled and attaching some eye bolts, and then of course just running some steel cable through PVC and using carabiners to attach it. The fun part was um, we actually decided uh, most of us to attach the poles to a battle belt. For anybody who is watching this tactically minded, you may be familiar with battle belts. They're covered in molly webbing give you a lot of options in terms of attaching gear. So being able to take along, let's say, first aid kits, um, canteens, and then as long as you're pulling the sled through the snow, it really gives you some options for loading things down and adding some additional weight. So between the five of us, we really brought some great gear. So we threw everything into the sled, uh, wrapped it with a tarp. You can see my little snow shovel in there. And I had a couple of extra eye bolts put in just so I could put my, uh, my bungee cords across. Everything's secure and ready to go. The trick is how to attach the sled. So in most of the videos we saw, uh, we found that a longer pole crossed in the back would give the most flexibility in terms of control, turning, and then a little bit of distance for the snowshoes. All of us but one decided to build a Polk sled. I think that's a personal preference, and considering that I'm almost maxing out the weight of the snowshoes just on my own, this is a better option for me. Once we decided on a spot, we disconnected our sleds and got into the business of padding down or packing down the site where we'd be setting up the teepee. It's fairly deep snow. If we had our snowshoes off, we could easily sink up to our waist. So we wanted a nice firm foundation, not only for the shelter, but for our pads, for the wood-burning stove. Uh, so going around like this, it took a little time, but it was definitely worth it. So regular tent stakes are just not going to work in this type of environment with snow this deep. Um, Kifaro actually does sell a specialized stake. It's basically conduit with a little eye bolt at the top that lets you dig deep down at an angle and then also use the guy out strings to provide additional support if there's storm or wind. Now here's another little trick I'm really glad we learned before we went out. Once we got the shelter set up, we got the stove set up as well, and we laid out our bed mats, we took some time to take our shovels and dig a trench all the way around. Now not only does that trench provide a place to put your feet, so it's almost like you've got a ledge to sit on, yeah, it also so provides a place nice. for the cold air to go. So naturally hot air rises, this gives a little bit more of a floor for cold air to sink down into, and believe me, it made all the difference in the world. The Kifaru teepees themselves weigh just over 11 pounds. I think the stove adds maybe another 7 pounds, and if you're doing the special stakes for snow and sand, you're adding about 3 more pounds to the mix. So all in all, just over 20 pounds for a 12-man shelter is pretty amazing, especially when you consider uh, there's really no walls for the wind to catch, so when this thing's guide out, it stands up to really any conditions uh, that Mother Nature throws at it. I was very impressed. The only downside I can find is that these are a single wall shelter, so as you can see, condensation does build up. 
Now Kefaro does sell a liner that not only holds in the heat better, but it will take care of this condensation issue for you. So bedding down for the night, a lot of people think you have to leave the stove on all night long. It's a common misconception the stove will not stay on unless you're getting up every hour or two to stoke it. The key to staying warm is going to be the layers. So at the very foundation, put down a water barrier, something like a personal sized tarp. Then a closed cell foam pad. Even the cheap ones will work. After that, you'll want an insulator, like an air mattress. And then I used a 0 to 20 degree bag with a down blanket inside. There were times that I was honestly almost too warm. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe on the channel. Maybe even share with your friends so you can start planning your next camp. If you have any suggestions, be sure to drop them in the comments below. And look forward to seeing you guys next time.